Kieran Donaghy is with us. How are you, Kieran? How are you? How are you getting ahead? Not too bad. Uh, same question to you first off. Who's the worst trash talker you've ever faced? Who's the worst? Oh, uh, I know I'm putting you on the spot here. Uh, I, I would say about three or four of the Tyrone fellas were fairly handy. Uh, Philip Jordan, uh, Garmley, uh, Ricey. Uh, Joe Mack could do a bit of talking or a bit of roaring when the time was right. But uh, yeah, they were, they were pretty uh, efficient at that side of the game, I would say. <laughs> How many people would pick you as uh, the best trash talker they've ever faced? I, I don't know. I don't know. As I said to you before many times, I stayed fine and quiet. If the Philan <laughs> stayed fine and quiet. So, <laughs> uh, probably good trash talkers themselves might say I was at a bit of it, but only because they started it. <laughs> uh, what was it like to be back on the pitch Saturday, Kieran? Yeah, there was there was a good bit of it going on between myself and Michal O'Sullivan, the fullback for Dingle <laughs> too. And, uh, and um, he's he's a good bit of stuff. He's wiry. He got locked into me early. And uh, yeah, it went on pretty much the whole game. But uh, ourselves and Dingle have been unbelievably kind of feisty battles over the last three or four years. Uh, we played them out now in Escal again for the third time in a row uh, in the club championship. Uh, they beat us in the county championship last year. We beat them in a the county league semi-final last year. So... There's a great, there's a great rivalry kind of built up between the, 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 the teams with kind of, you know, the games almost being kind of, you know, 50-50 at this stage. And they're, they're a quality team. Uh, they were pretty much, I think, at full strength the last day. We have a few guys to come back into it. A uh, young up-and-coming player, a guy called Dylan Casey, who I don't think it'll be too long before he's in with Kerry. Um, he's coming back from 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 an, uh, a leg injury, so um, yeah. Look, we're we're we're. It was good to be back out there, man. The buzz of the championship, the buzz of you know that bit of pain in your stomach the night before a game. That was a long time since since a lot of fellas had that. And of course, it was different getting physio on the side of the pitch. Uh, thanks be to God, it was a nice evening. I don't know what we're going to do when 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 the rain, because we know an Irish summer often brings rain. So. Uh, but yeah, well, look, we went through all our COVID things. We filled out our farms. We've uh, the, the the senior players themselves bought a, 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 a high grade kind of uh, thermometer to to gauge for his temperatures before the games and before every training. We do just in case that it's just an added measure that we put in ourselves. We, I think there's a few clubs. I heard a few clubs around that doing it, so we we said we do it as well just to get another bit of you know that if a guy comes in and he's 38 or whatever, then he's obviously sent home straight away. So. Um, it, it, you know, we did all the protocols and it is a bit different, but you know, between the white lines, you're really back to, to, to the primal side of it. And that was great. And that was a, a good feeling that I think, you know, a lot of fellas were looking forward to, because as much as you get trial games and challenge games, they're all well and good, but nothing like, um, nothing like, uh, the white heat of championship battle, I suppose. Yeah, it seemed certainly watching the games on television over the course of the weekend that it looked like pretty high octane stuff. The fitness wasn't wanting, it seemed, from the outside looking in anyway. Did, did you feel a bit leggy at all? No, I'm actually, uh, I put on the COVID stone, so I was, um, hmm. I was, I was in heavyweight condition uh, back in mid-March, but I'm after losing over a stone and a half, so I'm, I'm back to proper weight. Uh, so I actually felt really good, felt very mobile. Uh, we were we were ahead. We played really well in the first half in Dingle, as they can do with the forwards. They have got a real run in us in the second half um, and scored seven in a row to, to go from five down to two ahead. Uh, and we brought on Shane Callaghan, um, uh, the Rocky Roots, as we call him. He came on a corner forward and he kicked three absolute screamers. Um, single-handedly really dragged us back into the game and Feet Namangan, who was coming back from an in injury as well, two guys that suffered a hamstring injury three or four weeks ago and worked their tails off to kind of get back and be and be ready to be some kind of an impact in this game. Uh, well, the two of them came on and, and bailed us out Saturday night. We only scored four points in the second half and the two scubs, Shane, Car uh, Shane Callaghan got three and Feet Namangan got one. So that's how to make an impact for your team. And... Um, they put in three hard weeks, four hard weeks of, of, of rehab. And yeah, you mentioned the fellas are fit, but they are fit, of course. That's the, the new age we live in. All these guys, you know, keep fit. They don't, you know, pubs were closed. Fellas couldn't go too haywire. Uh, but, you know, the, these younger generation guys are non-stop training and they're into it and they're into the weight side of it. And uh, you can really tell when they're trying to come back from injuries that they're they're coming back a bit quicker now these days because of the advances in in that side of it. Whereas when we were injured back in the day, it was a lot of 
you know, maybe rubbing and rest or whatever, whereas now it's all building back up the mes- muscle and putting strength into the area that's injured and stuff that maybe necessarily wouldn't have been done 15 or 20 years ago. But now, nowadays, it's, it's, it's par for the course. You can barely get a rub in a table anymore. I'm not the biggest fan of it myself. I like the old bit of... Uh, I like the old bit of uh, attention to the muscles with a bit of deep heat before games, but um, I still got a bit of that before Saturday night. So it got it got me around for 60 minutes, and uh, yeah, I felt good in myself, really good actually. Because uh, that that was one of the concerns actually before the resumption that players could get injured a little easier, but that seems to have been dispelled a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it has. Uh, I, I, you know, I look certainly coming back we we did pick up a few knocks like you know we probably four or five fellas that are just you know we we three probably missed the game the last day and and we the two lads who who kind of declared themselves ready for maybe 10 or 15 minutes but you know it is it is it is a bit of an issue you know you're you, you can do all the weights and strength but nothing can prepare your body for adapting to a guy running at you at 100 miles an hour and how you change direction on that and you going at somebody else and you know, even your body, like even the first few nights back at training and the few first few big collisions, like, you know, I've gone home that night and I was like, oh, Jesus, it's good to feel a bruise again. It's good mm. to get a bang again um, because, you know, we were untouched for so long uh, from a physicality point of view. You know, you can do all the, the, the training and running and gym stuff and Zoom sessions, but that actual, that contact is 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 a huge part of our game. And, uh you know, you're going to have fellas having a few tweaks here and there'll be some clubs that, be, you know, will be unlucky. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I hate to put it on, 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 on physios or any of that because a lot of these injuries are, are injuries that happen with contact or are going to happen anyway. And, and most club teams now are really well prepared. So if a team has a few more injuries than another, it just means they probably have been a bit unlucky or else maybe the training, the, the physical training, we're very lucky with Damien Rail here with the Stacks who's in with Kerry for a few years, uh, top class at what he does, um, really advanced. Um, he's really, you know, done all the courses and he's kind of pushed us onto a good level with that side of it and kind of, you know, I, I think has us in great shape because we looked dead and buried yesterday, um, our Saturday night and, uh, yeah, we came back really strong with about five or six minutes to go. So that was encouraging for us and something for us to take in next week against Kilcommon in, in, in Connolly Park and Tralee in the, in, the, in the second group game. Uh, Kieran, we wanted to get your take on one of the, the bigger GA stories of the last week, which has been the discourse around Dean Rock and uh, his free-taking project. The, the prices made public last week, which kind of sent Twitter into a bit of a meltdown. In fairness, there was a lot of people on Twitter Defending him, I'd almost go as far as to say when it come, came to high-profile names, there was more people defending Dean Rock than actually having a go at him. You were one of those people. I, I think it's fair to say that you were probably one of the people who was most annoyed by some of the backlash Dean Rock got. Yeah, I just thought it was over the top. I just thought it was an assassination on the guy's character who does a lot of great work for charities in Dublin, who's given an amount of, of his free time up doing stuff with, with kids and... You know, I'm sure he's been at plenty of GEA grounds. I'm sure he's signed plenty of autographs. He's an unbelievable role model, as as most of them Dublin fellas are. And you know, it's it's um, I just yeah, like you know, I, I was really looking at it from above anything to do with the with the coaching or any of that. I just thought it was the kind of just the, the fact that that uh, people can sit there and and put this stuff up on Twitter and have a go off a guy that's start, trying to start a business. And yes, it's a business. And yes, he's allowed to do that. Um, GEA players are allowed to to try and mark themselves as best as possible and try and make a living for themselves because there's so many GEA players in the country that, you know, turn down overtime, turn down extra hours, turn down a promotion and a job because they're giving it all for their county. Uh, and when they often go and do something by themselves or something that's slightly off the cuff, it's just this kind of backlash that 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 just bugs me. I think we're past that as a nation. I think we've moved on. You know, I, I said I thought a lot of the comments were were almost kind of, I think it was Brigodry that was in a lot of the comments and a lot of like, how dare he even think about charging this for his fee? You know, you go to any top coach in any top uh, sport outside of the GEA, you know, y- y- some of the figures are are, are 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 crazy, and I think if if Dean Rock is looking like Dean Rock's uh, stuff, you know, apparently is you know does video feedback. There's very detailed analysis. There's stats on where you kicked. On, like, there's so much feedback in this. This isn't the kind of land onto the pitch, 
take a take an envelope and and watch a guy kicking a few kicks and that's it. There's feedback to the guys, you know. I think there's feedback even down the line, and I think there's something like that that there can always be a, a correspondence there if, if a guy is struggling or whatever. So, you know, I I I think the service he's offering isn't you know it, it, it isn't for some people and some people can't afford it. And this was never designed really for young kids. I think a lot of people are going oh kids are going to be getting onto their parents to try and do this. This isn't that kind of thing. Uh, this is more senior club players that are trying to get an edge on a vital component of the game. And we have one of the best in the business offering the services. And if I was a free taker and I was 20 years of age, you know, I, I, I'd be trying to figure out how, how can I meet this guy and how can I learn off him? Um, and I think that's what his target audience is. And I just think that the, the, the jump on his back to, to kind of assassinate his character and, and how dare he start the business uh, from the GEA. When you look at the GEA and Crow Park, it's nothing but a business. Uh, it's a yeah. great association. They do a lot for volunteers. We know that volunteers make the GEA. But you go to an all Ireland final and you see the commercialism that's around that and, you know, try and tell me that one of the shining lights can't do something on the back of that for himself is, is kind of annoying to me, yeah. The, the begrudgery thing is interesting. I, I wonder if half of the begrudgers actually have an issue with the fact that a fella is standing up and publicly saying, I am good enough to teach you how to do this thing. That Dean Rock is saying and openly admitting that he realises he is one of the best in the country, the best in the country at what he does. I, I wonder if people just have this weird issue with that, that people can actually have the confidence to admit that they are good at something because as Irish people we're supposed to be modest we're supposed to be refined we're not supposed to, to to preach about how good we are at all yeah maybe that's it maybe that's it and you know like as I said look you know this kind of notion that that Dean Rock is, has has never done anything for, for anybody in the GEA for free that was almost kind of what was portrayed it was almost like how dare you be you know looking for money like this you know, I know, I've done it myself. I know what GEA players are asked to do for charities, for families, for a kid every once in a while to give them a call or whatever, or call to somebody. And GEA players do it and never make a fuss out of it. And, and um, you know, are, are, are brilliant uh, to people from their clubs and their, and their localities. And oftentimes when it doesn't suit them, um, you know, they might have family commitments, they might have something on, and we still managed to, to, to try and make it happen somewhere or the other. And, you know, it was it was it was more the the you know, I've I've my issues with WhatsApp and the stuff that's said in WhatsApp and the stuff that people put up on groups and share on groups. I've a major issue with the way people share the stuff around without thinking at all, really. And uh that was the first place I saw it and I had to correct a few WhatsApp groups that I was on and you know, address those guys first. And, and yeah, then I, I just started seeing it on Twitter like two or three days later. And it just, I just said, ah, here, come on, lads, get over it. He's charging. If you want to pay it, you can pay it. As I said earlier on, if my son was, was at a level where he was, you know, wanting to be, he really wanted this and I can take him down to the pitch and I can practice with him for hours and hours and hours, but I can, I can be practicing the wrong stuff. And that's, and that's what this is about. This is about meeting this guy once or twice, getting everything you can out of him for those two sessions. And you don't probably meet him again. You probably recommend him to all your friends that are, that are good free takers and want to learn. But you don't probably go back to him again. You've got everything you need off him in these sessions. And it's then your job to go away and practice. But there's a big difference between practicing something wrong and practicing something when you're doing it right. And I think... If you have an hour or two with, with Dean Rock and, and the technicalities of it, he's going to teach you how to do it right. And you can then go away and practice that for your 10,000 hours if you want to be a Dean Rock or a Brian Sheehan or a Morris Fitzgerald or a, a Shawnee Shea, any of these great kickers. Uh, and nothing stopping any of them fellas from, from doing something similar. Uh, um, and, you know, price points are always a, a tricky thing when you're starting something. Like, let's call a spade a spade. It, it, it's never easy. Even me... You know, it, it's never easy to set out something at, at the start or, or, or take that leap. And, and Dean took it, and I just think he was kind of... Uh, I just felt it was it, there was a lot of shitty stuff going on and there was no need for it. And we quickly forget the great work that these people do in, in their communities and in their areas. Um, and yeah, look, you know, maybe it's something to do with him being on the, the five-in-a-row winning Dublin team and, you know, they have enough or they have enough. That kind of mentality that might be in the rest of the country. Um Again, that goes back to that probably that word begrudgery of of them kind of you know 
been so dominant at the moment and everything seems to, to, to go right for them. But I, I, I think a guy I think a guy doing something like that is brave and he's trying to he's trying to set out something and, and, and do something a bit outside the box. And I think every time somebody sticks their head above you know, I saw it myself with Paul Galvin when he went off doing his fashion thing and the amount of stick and all the bitterness that there was the people saying stuff to me um really annoyed me that time as well and I probably didn't have the platform to 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 voice it and I just felt yeah I just saw a few few things in the space of a few minutes on Twitter about this Dean Rock thing and and, and yeah I was kind of sick of it really yeah I, I can imagine uh, listen Kieran we are out of time we wanted to chat to you a little bit about the NBA because it's back on Thursday but hopefully we'll get to that another day great stuff this morning good chatting to you all right thanks a million uh, Kieran Donaghy there at 9:39 on this Monday morning you are watching OTBAM.